I am running to be president for all of America, not half of America, because there is no victory in winning for half of America. nervous but confident how important it is for them to get Donald Trump back in office. Trump's been calling this country trash. Do let's hear from Professor Mark Meredith from the University of Pennsylvania also with the Wharton School of Business. Mark, uh, it does appear that these quiet streets of your Pennsylvania are in the eye of a storm. Yeah, we have seen so many political ads the last three months. Uh, the, the the benefit of a week from now is they'll they'll at least finally have a, a, our TV channels clear of political ads. Right. And who is stronger on the ads? And what are these ads trying to message? It's hard. It's hard to judge strength on ads. I think uh, Kamala Harris is doing a lot to try to talk about her um, her history. Um, she's also presenting uh, some of her economic plans and. Uh, talking a lot about abortion and reproductive rights. Uh, Trump is talking a lot about immigration, uh, talking a lot about the, uh, the challenges of the economy right now, uh, and talking about uh, the fact that uh, he, people might have liked the economy better during his time in office than during Biden's time in office. Are people in Pennsylvania feeling the focus upon them? I, th I think so. I think people understand that um, Pennsylvania is extremely important in the Electoral College. We also have a very contested Senate election. You know, it's not just the, the advertisements, but the advertisements, the direct mail that we're getting, um, the, the campaign activity happening on uh, when you're when you're walking on the streets. Like it's very it's very present here in a way that uh, you're experiencing this election differently than in a state where it's pretty pretty certainly going to be going for for Trump or Harris. Who does each think can tip the balance? And in many ways, I think the ads are really targeted that those individuals, that narrow slice of the electorate, uh, and trying to convince uh, those people uh, that, that they want to support uh, the, the, the candidate. You know, the received wisdom is, and I don't know how much wisdom can be received in an election as close as this, that it is the minorities traditionally who do not go out and vote much, the Latinos, the blacks, other people. And if they get mobilized enough, that would work to the advantage of the Democrats. Is that something you see? Yeah, I think more uh, disproportionately when you're looking at the coalitions that support the two candidates, uh, that uh, Republican candidates, especially in Pennsylvania, tend to draw more support from the more rural, more white portions of the state. Um, that when you think about where um, where Democratic candidates tend to do better, it's in the major urban areas, the places where there are more uh, black, Latino, Asian citizens. Um, so, so certainly I think Broadly speaking, if you can get more votes out of the of the urban areas, that's going to be good for for Harris. If you're getting more of the votes out of the the more the more rural parts of the state, that's going to be that's going to be good for Trump. Uh, what is the profile of people here? I mean, how much of the population really is the upper class white population, mostly in rural areas? How much is the working class non-white? I know these are lazy labels, but indicatively. Yeah, I mean, I think there is a little bit of a, a difference in that. The, the the more affluent uh, white voters they tend to reside in uh, the suburbs of the major metro areas often uh, the, the rural areas tend to be uh, more full of, of, of less wealthy white voters and so that is a, a part of a really clear divide not just in Pennsylvania but across the United States that um, more than anything like education really um, has come to um, determine a lot about how people um, about how people vote especially among white voters and there is this big divide between uh, those that have a college college degree and those that don't in terms of uh, Harris will uh, do better among those with a college degree, uh, Trump among those who, who do not. What is the difference in numbers between one kind of voter and the other that you're describing? Um, how many more of one do you have than of the other? When you're talking about you know, upper upper class voters, there's going to be fewer upper class voters than there are going to be middle class or, middle, or working class voters. So I think part of the uh, part of the challenge, if you're 
um, uh, the Democrats, not just in Pennsylvania, but, but nationwide, when you're trying to build a coalition that's sort of centered around, um, like you pointed out, uh, black voters, Latino voters, Asian voters, maybe um, maybe uh, college-educated voters, um, that you have to sort of piece together a bunch of different uh, smaller pockets of voters to try to add up to the total that, that the Republicans can, can get out of, of the more um, working uh, and, and middle-class uh, white voters.